This is The Fifth Estate, a conversation between young African scholars from the Fort Hall School of Government and Professor Mutahinguni. This Sunday we discern the end of politics. The impression we have formed for the last five months is that a wind of change is blowing. As Harold Macmillan declared in 1960, when the wind of change blows, it blows. Those standing in its way get blown. When the wind blows, nothing can stop an idea whose time has come. The wind of change is blowing in Kenya. It is soft, all right, but it is gathering momentum like a storm. Those with ears can hear it, those with eyes can see it. Maraga David is doing budget activism because he cannot hear or see it. The media is confused like the Tower of Babel because they cannot hear or see it. NASA is about to end its useless life because they cannot hear or see it. But William Ruto has seen and heard the wind of change. However, he is running away from it. In the meantime, Ryla has seen and heard it and he has yielded. Consider our thoughts. The handshake is not the wind of change. It is a catalyst of change. And yes, we were skeptical about it. We called Ryla a turncoat revolutionary who had abandoned his followers in the wilderness on their way to Canaan. We were wrong. Ryla saw and heard the wind of change. This is why he took a helicopter from the wilderness to Harambe House to do the handshake. But we were wrong on another count. We said that Ryla was like Moses. That we sent him to the house of Pharaoh to proclaim and declare, let my people go. But Ryla was convinced by Pharaoh to share power 50-50. Imagine if Moses had shared power with Pharaoh 50-50. The Hebrew Israelites would still be in bondage, we said. But we were wrong about Ryla. He did not abandon the liberation movement because he saw an opportunity to share power. He did it because he saw and heard the wind of change. That is why he abandoned politics of the rocking chair that keeps us busy but takes us nowhere. He became a statesman and not a politician. And William Ruto should be afraid of this model. Now we will address William Ruto. He must attend to a number of ground truths from Raila Odinga. Raila has run for president for the last 21 years and he knows what to do and what to avoid. 1. Raila knows that it is not always right to be right. William Ruto is right about Gemma. And yes, Gemma is behaving badly. But being right about this will take him nowhere. For 21 years, Raila Odinga has been right. He has been right about the unfairness of the tyranny of numbers. But being right did not take him anywhere. Doing the right thing is the game changer. And that is why Raila did the handshake. The second lesson for Ruto from Raila is this. The best calculation is always the absence of calculation. You see, Ryla has seen and heard the wind of change. He does not understand it, but he has yielded to it. And he has yielded knowing that the best calculation is the absence of calculation. He knows that the wind is bigger than him. But Ruto has refused to yield. To Ruto, everything must have calculation. Playing the devil's advocate, I like to ask the hard questions. For the first time in his political career, William Ruto will run for president in 2022. This will be his first time to run for president. Yet in our history, no one gets elected in his first trial. Raila has tried for 21 years, Kibaki tried for 15 years, and Uhuru failed in his first attempt in 2002. And the question this history begs is simple. 
Will Ruto get elected president during his first attempt? We have no idea, but we think so. And this is why Ruto must take time off to study Ryla, who failed for 21 years. Ruto should also study the oak tree. The oak that resists the wind loses its branches one by one. With nothing left to protect it, the trunk finally snaps and the tree falls. But the tree that bends to the force of the wind grows stronger. With this pressure, its trunk grows bigger and its roots go deeper. If Ruto resists the wind of change, he will fall like the oak tree. We want to repeat some realities here. Ruto has never run for president. Fact. Never. No one has become president in Kenya on their first attempt. Fact. Never. And Ruto expects to become president on his first attempt. Fact. Really? Is this possible? In our view, history has taught us that we learn nothing from history. If Raila tried for 21 years, Kibaki for 15 years, and Uhuru for 10 good years, this history, it means nothing. Ruto can become president, history or no history. Or can he? Can he bend history instead of history bending him like the oak tree? Can he defy the current winds of change and the bends of history to become president at the first attempt? To defy the bends of history and the fury of the winds, Ruto must become as harmless as a dove but as wise as a serpent. If Ruto was a student of the Fort Hall School of Government, we would tell him to go underground and yield to the winds of change. Raila is already doing this and he is looking good. If Ruto does it, he will become boss. Will William Ruto bend the winds of change or will the winds of change bend Ruto? Will he bend the oracles of history and win the election after the first try? Or will the fury of the oracles bend his destiny? In pondering these questions, we must be guided by the words of George Bernard Shaw when he said, The reasonable man adapts himself to the world. The unreasonable man persists in trying to adapt the world to himself. But in the end, all progress depends on the unreasonable man. For William Ruto to think he can bend history and its oracles is to be unreasonable. For Ruto to think he can turn and twist the winds of change in a direction that favors him is to be unreasonable. And if Bernard Shaw is right, Ruto, the unreasonable man, will emerge on top. But to fight the war of the unreasonable man, Ruto should borrow from the Tao of Paradox. In this passage, Sun Tzu teaches us that war, like politics, is about deception. When strong, appear weak. When executing a scheme, appear friendly. When near, appear distant. If Ruto will become the boss, they must never see him coming. No vice president in the history of politics ever became president by asserting himself. You charm your way to power. No vice president ever became president by buying politicians, whatever that means. And this is because you can never buy a politician, you can only rent one. I've said that in the past. No vice president ever became president by selling himself as a self-made politician. And this is because whenever you look at a self-made politician, you're staring at the horrors of unskilled labor. Every politician needs a mentor, more so anyone seeking the presidency. 
that this is why Ruto should spend his Sundays visiting wise men who like him, including Muzeki Baki, Uncle Moody, and Yoeri Museveni for mentorship. What is my point here? Ruto should carry only one lesson from Raila. To become president, you cannot be obvious, you cannot be impatient, and you cannot feel entitled. If Raila had stuck with Kibaki, he would be president today. But he saw himself as an equal to Kibaki. If Ruto allows Uhuru to make him president on Uhuru's terms, it will happen. But if he sees it as an entitlement, it will probably fall flat on the face. And now our final thought. Once upon a time, the wind and the sun had an argument over who was stronger. As they fought, a traveler passed by wearing a heavy coat. Then the sun declared to the wind, whoever forces the traveler to remove his heavy coat is the strong one. And so, the wind offered to go fast. With all its might, it blew at the traveler, tearing angrily at his coat. But the more the wind blew, the tighter the traveler held to his heavy coat. After many aggressive attempts, the wind gave up. Then the sun took over. It began by sending gentle, suggestive rays to the traveler. Then the rays grew warmer and warmer. Slowly, the man unbuttoned his coat and removed his scarf. Then it got very hot. The man had to remove his heavy coat and take shelter under a shade. The sun won the contest. Here is the lesson for Ruto. The wind of change will not take away your coat. However, the warm rays of the dynasties will. They are beginning to warm the hearts of Kenyans. To survive, you must choose your battles wisely. <laughs>